So again, if we go back in here, you will map the state through the computed property. So, so you will do it right here in the computed object. And then you can map state like this. You can pass a function and then within the function you can pass um, an object and that object you just use you can use arrow functions and then you'll just name it however you want so if in in this application I want to use count you just count and then you can pass the state this is a function uh, ES6 syn syntax and that allows you to do state count so very much this is saying I'm passing a state and I'm returning a state count which is going to be this count right here you can also has a, a different alias you know so you can say count alias and then just pass the count um, store uh, state uh, to it or you can do it with uh, this method so like, like this right here so if you want to use something from specifically from view from the component you're talking you, you are actually on you can actually use the store and then you can uh, like it's showing in the example here you can add whatever local count you have and that will give you like a count plus local state so you can combine those things together say a specific component it's an incrementer for some reason you can do that obviously so you can combine them and that's actually where it gives you a lot of power over here this is more or less how I do it uh, you can pass an array and you can just pass whatever uh, name of that state um, you, you have or you can just just use the the object spreader and then like just, just pass a bunch of objects into it so you can just pass them like count um, checkout items products and then you can have your state like that it's really useful as far as like I said you don't need to be using this store account you know this store products this store checkout you can you can just map them over here and then you can use them more like you would inside of a regular view application getters so getters are very much like filters so uh, whenever you have a state and you want to have like for example in a to-do list in this example you want to have the done items you can say done to do count or something like that inside of your computed uh, properties again and then you can uh, you can just return the state and then like like it's showing over here just filter it down to whatever it's done in the length so you you have a count of that same state so basically it allows you to filter your data in different ways uh, say you have uh, conversations that are open and you don't have any answers from your clients you can have that separated from all the conversations for example so you don't have to keep calling your server for these things you can just call for all the conversations and then filter them down inside of your getters your getters they cache you know so uh, everything you add in your getters are gonna be cached in the browser and then they're just gonna be changed as you change them obviously so here we can see an example of how we can define getters in the store this is our store for Vuex, and then you see how over here we have the state. The state has to do. These are an array of objects. This each object has ID, blah blah blah, and then it tells you if it's done or not. And then over here in the getters, I can say, hey, which ones are done? I can pass a state against. This is a, a function, a narrow function. State function return state to do's and just filter this by whatever again another arrow function. To do, I'm passing this, so this is very much a, um, a, a parameter. And then I'm saying, hey, to do, whenever your whatever to do is done, just filter that by then. And then, and then that's how I know from my getters what done to dos I have, you know. So I can have to dos, and I can access those from the component, but then I can also have done to dos or account, like I was showing before. So that that gives you the flexibility of having. Uh, different information for the user with the same data and again just like map state you have map getter so Vuex gives you all these awesome methods that allow you to just simply add this stuff to your components so if you look at over here within the computed properties all I do is pass an array of whatever to do's count that I have and that done to do's is more or less how you would name it over here the same with the map state whatever you name it over here to do is that's what you map state to so just how the count was if this was count that's how I can get it on the other side getters done to do say this was done to do and another getter you can pass them all like this 
or you can pass an object, name it to, to say maybe you want to name it something a little bit different within the component. You can do that. And then you can just pass whatever done to do count, which is how it's going to be named over here. So, okay, so going back into mutations. So remember mutations is how you can actually mutate the data. The state is not going to be able to change. You're not going to be able to just go to the object and say, hey, this state object equals this. You have to do that from a mutation. That's the one thing about Vuex that I personally love because it gives me uh, it gives me the assurance that there is a proper way of you changing the data so you can just just change it from anywhere. Uh, if that wasn't the case, then more or less you're going to be writing everything inside of your component and then you're not going to have the advantage of, of being able to just look at it from your browser for you to be able to make changes. So mutations, the only way to actually make change state into a Vuex store is by committing that mutation. Each mutation has a string type and a handler. So basically you can pass the string type and the handler. The handler function is where we perform the actual state modifications and it receives the state as the first argument. So this is the handler function and this has the state as the argument. And over here, this is how we can change our actual state. So you see how from the mutation, we're actually able to change this count. And this again is inside our Vuex store. Uh, it is a good idea and uh, good implementation to use constants for the mutation types. This will allow you to be a lot more organized and say when you're going inside of a project, you can quickly see and other developers can quickly see what you're doing. So if you just go to these files, you're going to be like, oh my God, you know, what is all this? But if you go inside, it's, it works like an index in a book. So I'll show you an example over here. Here I have a, a project and I have a bunch of mutation types. And if you go through this project, you're going to see that I have, okay, you can play video, stop video, show video. You can go through them and more or less understand what is going on and what the application is about. So it definitely works as an index and it definitely is helpful when you are using the, the, the debugger and the debug tools for you to be able to look at them with nice big bold letters you know like okay this is what happened rather than just a uh, camel case you know so this works a lot better and like i said it's better because it gives you like it gives you an index that it's easier for you to follow you and everybody else who's coding the app you know so it really makes a difference so this is how you can put it inside your mutations file and this is how uh, what i was showing you and then this is how you will call it inside of the Vuex store. So import this whatever mutation and then where you have your mutation set up, you will just add that as the function. So if you use these brackets here and then the name is the same thing as me saying this is a function, you know. So name function is passing the state and then you make whatever changes to that state. Uh, and if you want, I can show you a few examples over here. Um, here is my mutation type. This is set conversations. And if I look for set conversations, you see that I'm committing these conversations right here. And this is how I'm passing data from the server. So I'll go into a little bit more detail about this. But as you see, what I want to show you is the actual mutation. So you can you pass the state and then you have a payload. The state conversation, so this is what I have inside of my state over here, state conversations. I am able to then make the change right here because I am passing it from over here. So as it's coming from the server, I'm passing it right there. Again, so this goes more into committing the mutations. Mutations have to be committed. Works like an event registration. You can commit from the store, store commit in, in increment. Um, but I really recommend you you do more of a, a um, and I'll go over that in a minute, a, a dispatching actions and your actions actually make the commits just like I was showing you in the previous project. But you can also do it straight from the component uh, like this, store, commit, increment, and then that's how you commit and that's how you mutate your data. You can commit with a payload. So as you see here, we have a payload. This is the end. And this is the payload right here, the 10. The payload can be an object. So inside the object, you can pass as much data as you want. 
mutations follow uh, viewers re reactivity rules and I'll leave a link over here in the slideshow and I also have a link for the slideshow and I'll put it right beneath the comment in the comment section um, and then it works pretty much the same way you can not just change it you have to uh, use reactivity pro like the, the way reactivity works so instead of just saying hey I want this object to change all the data and I want to make it equals to whatever new object it is you have to use either view set object new prop and then one two three or stay use the spread operator state object equals object spread all this object over here and then the new prop one two three so that's how you can do it or you'll do it with object assign if you go inside of this this page right here you're gonna see more in-depth explanation on what that is and how it works I don't know if this has happened to you. It definitely happened to me a lot when I was getting started where like things didn't change or they changed once and not the other time around. And I'm like, okay, how come this is not changing? And a lot of times it's because I was just changing the state itself um, or the object from the state itself rather than making it reactive. So you have to read these rules for you to understand that a little bit better. But Vuex follows the same rules. So that makes it convenient. If you already understand this, then you'll know what I'm talking about. Mutations must be synchronous. So that's very important. And that's one reason why I was telling you before that you want to call the actions. And then from the actions, you want to call the mutations. Why? Because this is a big reason. Your actions can actually be asynchronous. So when you're making calls to the server, you want to make that asynchronous. That way your user, whoever is using the application, they don't have to wait for this call to come back from the server and then finally be able to keep using the application you want to make it more interactive so that they click on something maybe there's a loader or something or maybe they can continue working on something and you show them a little uh this is how long it's left you know for you to do this a loader again or something like that that can be asynchronous and then from that asynchronous action you can call a mutation which is always synchronous and a reason for that is any state mutation performed in the callback is essentially untrackable. So you will not be able to track it. Debugger will not work. Instead of calling mutations directly with store commit, consider using actions to commit the mutations. So that's again going into what I was talking to you about. And of course, actions can be asynchronous. So over here, I have an example of how uh, it looks in your view, Vue.js tools. If you don't have it, download it. It's going to be big you know for you to work on your view pro projects uh, as you see over here these are mutations as I load the app that happen so I get tags I set recipient conversation pagination I set recipient conversations I set on read search set the text search uh, set active recipient conversation and each one of these as I step on them it shows me what payload payload I have and what type of actions they are. So this is the payload false. So I guess uh, this is loading the conversation. So this uses a loader and it's being false. It's probably being true somewhere else, you know? So it, it starts the loader. It's showing them, okay, this actually has the skeleton loader that I, that I did a video for. And then when it's false, it just removes that skeleton loader. And as you see, I can do it from over here. I can revert. So I can go and revert this right here and see how the application would look at that, that specific point in time. And that's big, you know, when you're trying to debug a big uh, component-based application where you have 50, 60 components and you don't know exactly where something is coming, you can just come back to this map. And as you see, since I did a uh, constant for the mutation types and I have a, a, the big uppercase letters with the underscores, I can easily read what that is and what's going on. And that's what I meant by uh, using this right here, the mutation types. So going back into actions. Actions are similar to mutations, but different in that. Instead of mutating the state, actions commit the mutations. Actions can contain arbit arbitrary asynchronous operations. So through an action, I can commit whatever um, mutation I want. So in this case, it's increment. And this increment will go back into a mutation right here. And that's what's going to be able to change the state itself. So I just usually don't call the mutation. I never call the mutation from a component or from somewhere else. I always call an action. The action then calls the mutation. The mutation then changes the state. And that's the flow that I was showing you in the graph before. So if we go back to that right here, 
you perform the action that commits the mutation, the mutation mutates the state. And then the state goes back into the component and the component dispatches the actions, which is what, where we're going right now. 